Hello everybody, welcome back. Uh, aside from maybe personal safety uh, on the road, what's your next big concern? Are you prepared for being stranded? Maybe you're out boondocking somewhere and it don't matter, it can be happening in, a, in an RV park, it can happen in a parking lot, it can happen along the road. Uh, but the further out you adventure, the more important it becomes to be prepared to get yourself out. So whether you're stuck, broke down, flat tire, whatever, I'm going to go over a couple of things on how I prepare, uh, including some tools I take along, and that's that. The good news is everything came in for the RV, the fuel pump, the strainer, and the new float. So that's all here. I'll be able to get the uh, RV together maybe this evening. And uh, Anyway, let's get on with this. I probably ought to start with getting stuck. Getting stuck, that can happen to anybody, anywhere. You may never take your RV off the, off the hard surface, but you could pull, heck, you can get stuck in your own yard, which I have. And we hook up my buddy's truck, and we, uh, we just pull it out gently, and away, away we go. Out on the road, you know, there's sand, and there's soft ground, and as careful as you might be, stuff happens. Uh, there might be a detour, you might have to turn around somewhere you weren't expecting, and uh, it's not hard to get stuck. If you're lucky enough, uh, somebody can buy maybe in another RV or a, or a truck or, or something, and a lot of times it doesn't take much, a little gentle pull, and, uh, you know, I have a, I think it's 20 or 25 foot tow strap, lot lighter than a chain and it's quite capable so I keep that in the RV I've used it to pull out a minivan out of the sand with the mighty Miss Tioga <laughs> okay tools uh, tools that I take along yeah I can't take all these there's not room for it that's a lot of weight but I want a full a pretty full set of tools that I can cover a lot of jobs if they if need be so I started with this set of uh, it's a 165 piece set of sockets, more sockets, deep well sockets, a quarter inch drive, three eighths drive, half inch drive, um, the standard sockets, six point sockets, deep well sockets, and some standard and, uh, and uh, metric wrenches. Now while this is a complete set, it only goes up to, the yeah, sockets are pretty extensive for the sizes from small to they're pretty good, pretty large, up to three quarter, thirteen sixteenths. Anything bigger than that is that's good. Okay, that's gonna cover about anything on that RV. Uh, the wrenches, though, they come up a little bit short, so I kind of supplemented this set with, and we'll have to go inside the RV here in a minute. You know, this is nine percent of it. I have a little bit more that really makes this all a complete set. I, the rest of it is in a little basket. I have four baskets stored inside with some different groups of tools. Okay, we're going to switch cameras a minute. Here's some good news. My parts came in the, uh, to get the Ty Miss Tioga back on the road again. Okay. Uh, here it is. What do we got here? Here's that whole fuel pump assembly. And here's the, and here's the new pump. Okay, old pumps don't work no more. There's the new one. And this is a strainer. I already have it popped off and loose. So no yucky stuff gets up in the fuel pump. Here's a new one for the new pump. And this float that leaks. It works the gas gauge. It, it, it leaks. It filled up with gas. And it sank to the bottom. <laughs> and it always shows as a, the tank being empty. Well, here's the new one. There it is. So I'll get this together here after a while and uh, get it back in the Tioga. And we'll dump five gallons of gas in it. Hopefully we'll be on the road again here. Okay. All right, I'm going to go inside and show you somehow I have this organized. Because I don't want tools any all over the place and just everywhere and... 
any more than anybody else does. So, okay, the dinette. All right, here's my workstation. You know, the dinette. You know, here's the overhead storage. Um, and I reserve these two as my garage. And you look in here, I have things like a cordless drill and rechargeable flashlight and uh, some random things. But there's this top shelf in here that I keep these four baskets. Let's see that. Okay. And in those four baskets, I keep some different categories of tools. I'm going to take those out and we'll have a quick look at those. Okay, so the sockets and the wrenches. Um, here, I, I've expanded on that. Think of some uh, tools and, and categories, okay? So, here we have screwdrivers. We have the spray blade screwdrivers, we have Phillips head screwdrivers. Hey, the next best thing to WD 40 and duct tape is a hammer and a pry bar. Okay, what about pliers, um, types of pliers? Okay. You need on those pliers, vice grip need on those pliers, regular need on those pliers. We have wire cutters, another screwdriver, regular standard pair of pliers, and we have. Oh, I don't know where my wrenches are at. Yeah, I only needed a few more wrenches to expand on that, uh, on what the my main set was lacking. Okay, a few more wrenches. Oops, another one. And some adjustable wrenches. So the, the socket set is really complete. I like that set. Needed a few more options with the wrenches. So there's that going on. Mm -hmm. I'm going to putty knife scraper type thing. Okay. So with the wrenches, screwdrivers, the family of pliers type things. It occurred to me I don't have a pair of channel locks. Huh. I need a pair of channel locks in there too. Okay. And the pry bar and the hammer. That's a pretty good range of tools, right? All in a little basket. Second thing. Yeah. Okay. Here. I have a basket just for fasteners. You know, from duct tapes to electrical tape. And I have electrical tape in a number of places. More electrical tape. Uh, Teflon tape. I have um, Velcro. I have JB Weld. And a spool wire. Okay, I even have scotch tape. But, and I have this special hanger stuff that I could use this under. This and this. Okay. Wire and this metal strapping. It's in the plumbing department. It's cheap and, you know, if for some reason something came loose on the RV, especially underneath the RV, maybe the exhaust or the muffler kind of came loose and it's hanging and dragging. You know what, wire? You can get under there, lift it up, wire it up, and get you down the road a little ways to somewhere where you can get a more permanent fix. So that's in with my fasteners. Electrical. <laughs> Electrical. I got, oops, had, yeah, I got wire, fuses, um, both the RV engine type fuses, I think, I think it takes these kind, where are these at, okay, and the RV 12 volt breaker box also takes these, so there's an assortment of those fuses, I have wire connectors, I got wire nuts, and more fuses, more electrical tape, zip ties, uh, and this is going to be better organized because I may be adding, I may be expanding the electrical thing. We've got more, another spool of red wire and black wire, another pair of strippers, oh, and here, never enough. Here's this, uh oh, okay, here's one of these sets that have all these connectors in it. I need to straighten that up some. And a 
and a $15 voltmeter. Check and diagnose a lot of stuff with that. Okay, there's four bins. A lot of stuff up on that shelf. I can cover a lot of things. <clears throat> Lastly, just some miscellaneous things. Had the cordless drill up there. These are $9.99 at home, at, uh, home Depot. Okay, complete set of drills. Never on that. They don't take up much space. They come in handy for projects, not necessarily emergencies, but a oh, tape measure. I have some miscellaneous adapters in here. Another tape measure. And I got my an extra, just a generic one. 30 amp to 15 or 20 amp adapter. Here's a 30 amp to 50 amp adapter. You never know. Some parks, some places. Not that I ever go to parks, you know. Or campgrounds or RV resorts, but I have it if I need it. Uh, Oh, my propane adapter if I want to fill the little one pound tanks. There's just kind of some miscellaneous adapters in here. Stuff. Okay, what else? So what's that? So that pretty much covers tools. Pretty much. Another little pry bar, a utility knife. That's it. I'm done with tools. What else we got? Huh. Before I forget, you know, I made that that kit that I broke down. But that's why we're sitting right now is because the fuel pump quit running. Here's that kit I bought. It has an external fuel pump, hose, wires, everything I use to make that repair. I'm always going to store this in the RV somewhere. If for whatever reason I have a fuel problem again, whether it's a fuel pump again or the fuel pump relay or something that's just not a quick, you know what? Take me about 20 minutes, I could have this back on. <laughs> this is like a little emergency kit if there's ever a fuel problem. So, this kit will always go along. Alright, uh, oil filter. I need to change oil soon. Oops, along with that duct tape, I need WD 40. You think I believe this? This Dremel. This actually played a part and saved the day in the fuel thing. Okay, this Dremel, if you know what a cutoff wheel is, this Dremel has little miniature cutoff wheels, and I actually had to cut a, fuel, a metal fuel line, and it was way down in. No, I can't think of any other tool that would have got down in there. You know, it's similar to this disc. You know, it's real thin, but it's a cutoff. It's a cutoff wheel. I'm not gonna dig it out, but. Huh. So, so, so I am starting to get power here, ain't I? But the main tool set I keep behind the passenger seat. There are compartments I could keep it somewhere else, but it's handy there. Doesn't take up much space at all. These baskets up on a shelf. What else? I need the grease. There's a grease gun and one of the small ones, some grease tubes. I need to grease the front suspension while I'm doing the, uh, the oil change here soon. Tires. Oh <laughs> boy, tires. Okay, tires, 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 tires. Wow, where do you start with tires? Probably the easiest fix, probably the best case scenario is, instead of having a catastrophic blowout, is maybe you've run over a nail or something and you know, you've come out in the morning and you walk around and you say, oh, I've got a flat tire. It's one of them slow leaks that happens when you run over a screw or a nail or something. Uh, those, are, those are the easiest uh, to fix, at least a temporary fix. You can always, if you can locate the screw or the nail, you, know, you can get one of these plug kits. Okay. Uh, there's a tool for when you actually go and you clean, the, stick it in the hole and ream it out to clean it out a little bit. There's some rubber cement. Oh, there's the plugs themselves. There's only one left in here. And the insertion tool. So, comes with directions. But, there's probably a YouTube video on, on that alone. So, I have a plug kit and I have my little emergency compressor that will do in a pinch at least to get. 
you know, my tires are rated at maximum pressure of the 85 PSI. And I run them right about that, 80 to 85 PSI. This little thing, you could probably let it run an hour and it'll probably not get, never get up that high. It just ain't that strong. I left it run for 20 minutes one time on a, on a tire that was partially deflated and it got up to about 50 pounds after 20 minutes. So even at 50 pounds, that's a pretty good amount to at least you know, take your time going to get down there. I wouldn't take it to highway speeds at that, you know, and have the tire overheat. Uh, but that might be enough if you just take it easy, take your time, probably get it to the next town and get to a tire shop or something. And so that's the best case scenario of a, a tire plug. I also, as an auction, I have keep a thing of tire slime, uh, which is another tire steel roof. This you have to completely deflate the tire, take the valve, the valve out of the valve stem, squeeze the stuff all in, and you've got to put the valve back in it and then air it out. Uh, but it's another type of steel. Other than that, wow, other than that, if you have a blowout, there's just no way around it. You're changing that. You're not plugging and you're not fixing that. It's, that tire is ruined. So hopefully you have a spare on board. I keep two jacks. I keep a two-ton floor jack, which is really borderline of being able to jack up the RV. Um, it will jack up the front. The front's not as heavy as the back. It did get by. It did get the back done. It was very marginal. <laughs> uh, it was marginal enough that I picked up a second jack. I picked up a four-ton um, bottle jack. Now, I always carry both jacks because the back having you know, two tires on each side, if one blows out, usually the other one's still good. It's still holding things up to where a bottle jack is a little taller. You can still get it under the axle. The front, if it is goes flat, well, there's, it has no help. That, that tire goes down and the, 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 you know, the axle or the spindle goes, the whole control arm goes down. And there's always room to get a bottle jack underneath there. So the two-time jack is much uh, lower profile. It can still get under, there's room to get it underneath there. And being a two-ton in the front slider, it can do the front. So that's, I carry those jacks. Um, what else? Something else I, I have it. I'm not going to dig it out right now, but some of you may have seen this before. Places where they change tires, impact guide. Well, this is, a air, this is air powered. I also have an electric one. So that makes changing tires a little easier too. I can either, um, I can plug it into the generator, turn the generator on, zip the bolts, uh, the lug nuts off and back on. That makes life a little easier. Okay, we've covered getting stuck. We've covered tools to have on board. We've covered flat tires a little bit. This stuff comes more into play too. Probably the more you boondock, the more necessary this stuff becomes, being prepared. Roadside assistance, I believe most if not all these days have a policy where they will not take their repair rig um, off the hard surface. So if you've went and gotten adventurous and you're back a dirt road or you know out on a the beach where it's, uh, there's uh, out in the sand and or anywhere like that, you're 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 kind of out of luck. They're not going to take their vehicle uh, back to get you. So that leaves you at the mercy of maybe you could probably call a local, um, maybe towing service that, that might, uh, or maybe a local uh, you know local good guy will help you out. But the more you venture off away from the main the main road. Uh, you might be on your own. You have to do some of this stuff. So, what else? Hey, there goes a frog. I want to see a frog. Come here, frog. What are you doing? Come here. Come here. I'm here, frog. Or a toad. I don't know what they are. Or a toad. Oh, it's got grass on it. Okay, he's got grass on his. He's, got gra he's, he's beeping. He got something in his uh, Some grass. He's probably going to. Surprised he hasn't peed. Okay, here we go. There we go. All right. Let me 
and say hello. Say hello. You're now a YouTube star. <laughs> He's happy about that. Okay. Okay, so RVs have emergency starting system. Have you ever tried it? Have you ever tested it? Do you know that for sure that it works if you need it? So whether you have an older RV or a brand new one, uh, you could accidentally leave your lights on. Maybe you went in shopping, went to dinner, and you come back out and the lights, you left your lights on, and your battery's dead. And you can't, so, um, and maybe even if you have a brand new rig, maybe in the rush of things, sometimes the orientation in a new rig kind of goes so fast and there's so much information to take in, you know, maybe the sales guys, maybe he overlooked that part of it, or maybe he did tell you about it and you just, there was so much information to remember, you forgot about it. So I'm going to show you that emergency start system, how to easily check to make sure that it even functions, you know, it's one of the things that you know, the one time you need it, it don't work. That's a bad time to find out it don't work. And you can say hi to Bella while we're in there, too. Okay, I got some handy little devices here that I got off of eBay. I want you to remember that. We're going to go up front here in a second. But I want you to remember this here. Um, all RVs have a power port somewhere. I have this uh, plugged into... It's an adapter. It actually turns one power port... Can't see it too well. Into two power ports. And it has two USBs. And you can put adapters or whatever in there. But it has a voltmeter indicator on it. Right now I'm plugged into the garage, so it's on trickle. My batteries are on triple charge. That's why they're reading a little high. Reading 13.3. So we know my battery. So we know my battery level is at 13.3, right? Now if we come up here, let's go up here. We'll take this opportunity to say hi to Bella. Okay. Hi, Bubba. Oops, did I just call her Bubba? <laughs> I may have renamed Bella Bubba. <laughs> That's her nickname. That's okay, she likes it. Uh, she wags her little stub. She responds to both. So there's Bubba. Huh? Here, you my Bubba. Huh? <laughs> so, okay. I have one of these devices up here too. Let me put this in a minute. Somehow my battery level has gone down to 50%. I don't know how, what I've done. Probably trying to start it when I wasn't getting it, stopped getting fuel. Tried to start it a couple of times. Still, that's pretty low. I don't know why it's that low. Anyway, so that's perfect. We'll test this out here in a second. Um, this is one of the good old models. We had a cigarette lighter. Okay. And an ashtray. And so here's another one of those devices I have. It's a, it's also a splitter. It turns from one power port to two. And here I have dual USBs in this one and dual USBs in that one. I can keep charged both dash cams plugged in while I'm using them and this one up here or this one I can keep my tablet my Android tablet using Google Maps uh, one and my phone I can keep all that stuff charged here anyway all right so my vehicle and it's probably similar same in yours uh, okay just to the left of the steering column down here there's a the white button is an on off I can turn my house batteries off completely the one on the right is you can see it's an emergency start now it's a momentary switch so you have to hold it in during the duration that you're going to do this okay now if i push that button in let's go back up here a minute now if you don't have these devices you can do it by putting a voltmeter um on the battery itself uh, these devices are handy because i can always see where they're at now i'm going to reach down here let me see. I'm gonna hold this button in a minute, and it should send power from my house batteries to my engine battery. So if my engine battery goes dead. I can push. I have all that power uh, in my house batteries. That 13.3. Remember that? Okay. I'm gonna push this button. And here's a little click. You should see it jump up a ways, and the power definitely jumps up. Well, that battery being low, it may take a minute for it to. Uh, get back up very high. Anyway, that's enough power. If I held this button in down here, which I am right now, 12.7, uh, I could hit the key and it would it would start up. So uh, that's it. This this device, if you're not sure the exact procedure for using it, that would be in your RV manual. 
another very valuable tool is having the repair manual for your vehicle. I found one that is really close for the RV. It includes, um, it's whatever range of years, but it includes the 87 E350. It includes the vans, all the, all the vans from the E150, 250, and 350, gas and diesel, um, but it's just for the vans. Uh, that's going to cover 95% of, it's going to be similar, it's what it is, okay? There's only going to be some minor differences of things that maybe the RV manufacturer added on after they got the cutaway van and assembled all this wonderful thing together. The next generation of these vans, I, uh, there is a manual available that includes the cutaway chassis and the RV chassis. So I found it for that newer range of years. I haven't found it for this for this year. It might be out there. I just got to do some more digging. So that can cover. You know what? Having that repair manual, yes, there are some very uh, very involved and technical. Uh, very deep and uh, they're based on a complete teardown and rebuild so they're very involved but they also have um, you know cover a lot of basic things too uh, they can that manuals you know twenty twenty five dollars and it can save you it will it will pay for itself the first time you use it changing your own air cleaner you know a lot of times we'll, we'll be concerned about um, you know, our brakes and tires, uh, you know, batteries and uh, oil changes and, and all that stuff. But you know, sometimes the air cleaner gets uh, overlooked. It doesn't get any easier than that. You know, know where you're, it, you, know, you open it up to the, the section and it shows you where it's at, how, how to access it. These older models just have one thumb screw to take the lid off. The newer models have um, an air cleaner box. There's usually like four clips on it. You just pop them with a screwdriver, take the lid off, take the old filter out. New filters are like 10 bucks, if that, you know. Put the new filter in, put the lid on, clips, bang. Um, that can save you from having to go, you know, take it to a mechanic to replace your air filter at, you know, the $70 an hour shop rate or more. So, just being able to do some simple things. Those manuals are just, you know, they're very valuable to have along. Uh, they may help you with other, they may give you the courage too to say, hey, if I can do that, maybe, I, maybe I'll kind of familiarize myself with that, this manual. Maybe a few more things about my RV that you can cover a lot of this stuff on your own, but I happen to be a mechanic. So, okay, I know that was a lot. That was a lot of stuff, right? Yakety, yakety, yak. Uh, you know, as far as the tools go, you know, you can always rewatch the video. Pause it if you want to scribble down some, you know, think some of these things have been handy. Uh, make your own kind of uh, list of maybe what you want to equip your RV with and have along for that just in case you never know sort of thing. It could get you out of a sticky spot. That about wraps it up. That is, uh, that's about as good as it gets with my RV. Trying to be prepared. The best tool is to be, just put some thought into being prepared what if. What will I do? What can I do? What might happen? Uh, I hope you got. Uh, I hope you picked up a few things from this video, and I hope you share them. Uh, there's nothing worse than being, you know, stuck out and having problems and, uh, and not sure if you can get help or if roadside assistance will even come out to where you're at, or if you have cell service or can even to call for help or even get the cell service. So, you know, there's. Being prepared and being able to get yourself out of a jam is, it's a wonderful thing. Let's just go with that. It's a wonderful thing. Uh, again, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, be sure to share it with uh, with others you think that are maybe, you know, what do I bring and what what if, you know, share it to, share it to people. Uh, hopefully you can get somebody else out of a jam uh, and get them somewhere to safety. Uh, so comment, got any tips or ideas or tricks or things you like, yeah, put them down in the comment section. Other than that, right, comment, like, subscribe, subscribe, that's it. See you next time.